Dog sitting sure didn't involve any sitting or soccer practice. He kept her from going under or through the gate. Now he had to keep her from going through the window. <laughs> this metal desk was heavy enough to keep Charky right here. It looked like George had to just sit there and watch the dog. Because every time he thought he had every escape covered, Charky escaped anyway. He didn't have to watch her if he could hear exactly where she was. Now he could practice in peace. George realized a good player must learn to ignore distractions, like mooing dogs. George really lost Sharky this time. He couldn't even hear that dog mooing anymore. George didn't think Charky even liked soccer. He didn't need a leash or a fence to keep Charky from running away. Charky didn't want to escape. She was just looking for someone who'd play ball with her. came back when I did. This gate's open. Good thing Charky didn't notice. She's very lively. Once or twice, she's run away. We're going to the park, George. Would you like to come? Whoa! If you fall behind, look for us in the park! George would get lots of practice now. Charky was the greatest soccer partner imaginable. Except for the dog drool on the ball problem.
sounded like a chicken in trouble. George could see those six chicks needed to be rescued. George took two because it seemed safest. That left four on the island. Unfortunately, the chicks enjoyed being rescued by George too much to do it just once. So now, he had six chicks to rescue. Again. They didn't need a rescue ferry. What they needed was a way to cross back and forth for fun. They needed a bridge. He couldn't think of any way to make a branch longer. He could make this longer. But could chicks walk on it? He just had to repeat the same pattern until it was long enough. Am I the first one here? Ooh! Are you making cocktail wieners? Yep. No toothpicks? It's not a proper party if you don't pick up small food with toothpicks. I know, Bill. George will be back any minute with plenty of toothpicks. George had made a bridge, but was it long enough? <laughs> now all the chicks had to do was walk across. <laughs> the bridge wasn't chick safe yet. What could he do to make it safer? That bridge had sides made from triangle shapes. suggested they cross one at a time, in case the bridge wasn't strong enough to hold them all. But the bridge was plenty strong. It even held a whole hand. A job well done. George could now rush home with the marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards. Maybe not straight home. <laughs> that must be some party if you need more marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards already. <laughs> now it's officially a party. All righty. We're going to play goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, come see what the chickens built. They are geniuses. We better start looking at colleges. And that's how the Rankins College Fund for Gifted Chickens got its start.
he'd found the pandas. That map really worked. George could watch the panda for hours. And he did. Until he felt like that baby would never get any leaves to eat. Nobody here? Guess I can lock up. Time flies when you're watching pandas. George realized he'd better go before they close the zoo. of other doors. Giraffes look much more peaceful than rhinos and lions. George would just have to keep looking. But he didn't find the way out. He didn't realize he'd left the door open. He might have left more than one door open. At least the meerkats were home. It wasn't easy, but he put every last animal back. Still, the animals all looked unhappy. Maybe meerkats don't live on ice. Where did he first see them? <laughs> this map was good for more than just finding the panda. It showed where all the animals belonged. Oh, George left that panda cam running. Say, where is George? The zoo must be closed by now. George! to get back to their own environments. So just by following what was next to what, George got everyone home. Everyone except himself. This map was the most amazing thing George had ever seen, except for the baby panda. George! George, are you in there? After all he'd done, George didn't want the man with the yellow hat to wake up the baby. Well, come on out of there. The zoo is closed. <laughs> Did you like the baby panda? <laughs> The orangutan liked his home, but he thought, 
There goes the luckiest monkey on the face of the earth. <laughs> a big duck would make a terrific photo. giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. <laughs> but a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. <laughs> the strange track suddenly stopped. Did the duck-footed snake fly away? Or maybe it was because nothing could leave tracks in hard stone. <laughs> you can't leave tracks in water. But you can make tracks with water. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. in a book. There they were, dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. George got a photo of Jumpy by leaving out food. Couldn't he do the same with a dinosaur? What a prize photo that would be. He didn't have any dinosaur food, but maybe they would like fruits and vegetables. George was thinking about something bigger than a fawn. Much bigger. Huh? <laughs> Those tracks couldn't possibly belong to a meat-eating dinosaur, could they? George decided to warn the man with the yellow hat that a hungry dinosaur might be visiting. The dinosaur had returned from the water. <laughs> and the tracks were headed towards Bill's house. Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yep. My new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh-huh. Hey. Now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. It sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. <laughs> oh. 
For such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. Oh, how did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George, he just used his imagination. Isn't that right? <laughs> Running errands? Uh -huh. uh, did he give you a note as usual? Uh -huh. Hi. <gasps> George must have accidentally mailed the note. How could he get what the man with the yellow hat needed now? He had to demonstrate what was wrong with the man with the yellow hat. <sighs> you need something for a blowfish? <laughs> Sniffles. <laughs> Big sneeze. Finger in the nose. <laughs> Runny nose. <laughs> a cold. You need something for a cold. <laughs> the man with the yellow sleep cap took the medicine and went back to sleep. And he slept a long time. You sound worse than I thought. Now, I know you're working hard on those changes, but we need to change the changes. <laughs> yes, turn the charts counterclockwise, turn the odd numbers even, and replace 26 with 19, 5, and 2. We need it done by 8 a.m., okay? <laughs> and remember, you'll feel better if you feed a cold and starve a fever. <laughs> To make sure his friend got really well, George would feed that cold plenty. Huh? George wondered what he'd put in his mouth. Was he already feeding his cold? <laughs> oh, this is a thermometer. It helps to tell if I have a fever. Uh -huh. Yeah, normal is 98.6 degrees. I have a very slight fever of 99.2 degrees. George had to starve a fever. Ah! What? Well, I... <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'll figure it out when I feel better. <sighs> Hi, George. Know anyone who wants a kitten? Somebody's sick? <laughs> oh, sorry. When my best friend's cat Fluzzy was acting sick, we all had to be quiet just like that. <laughs> Fluzzy stayed in bed a long time. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat was in bed a long time. And Fluzzy didn't act like her normal, playful self. The man wasn't acting like his normal playful self. He must have exactly the same thing Fluzzy had. <laughs> but Fluzzy wasn't really sick. After laying in bed a whole day, she had six kittens. <laughs> kittens? He wasn't sick. The man with the yellow hat was going to have kittens. If you know anyone who wants a kitten, send them to me. George had to get the apartment ready for kittens. By morning, George had the place ready. <laughs> huh? What? Hello? Hi, it's Professor Wiseman. It turns out your report's perfect. We don't need any of those changes. Oh, ch changes? I'll make sure you get a bonus for doing all that difficult extra work while you were so ill. I didn't do anything. Oh, you're so modest. Thanks again. Changes? 
Oh, boy. Milk? George? Meow, meow. Meow. Why are you meowing? Did, did I miss something? George was very happy the men with the yellow hat got healthy without having kittens. Uh-oh. Sounds like you caught my cold. Come on, get to bed. Hey, George, would you like a subway map as a souvenir of your first ride? Okay, wait here. I'll be right back. George couldn't wait to get on the train, so he didn't. Oh, good, the train's here. Now where's George? George? Ah! Wait, ah! Uh, here you go. George, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Ah! Huh? Wait, my monkey's on the train. George, get off at the next station and wait for me there. Oh, hey there. I've never had a monkey on my train before. Would you like to see how I drive this thing? Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, maybe you'd even like to help. Whoa. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, okay, the workers are done and the light's green, so it's time to get moving. So let's blow the horn. Ooh. <laughs> Now move the lever forward, easy, and get this train a rolling. <laughs> Great job. You can drive my train anytime. Bye now. <laughs> hey, it was George's friend Marco. <laughs> Hola, George. Do you want to play with us? <laughs> George! Excuse me, pardon me. Oh! Hey! George, I'll wait for you at the next stop, Petit Paris. Don't worry. <laughs> George was confused. He heard the rumbling and the screeching. So, where was the train? Confused. This looked like where he'd been before. And that was the same clown, which meant. Uh -oh. George was back where he started. How did he do that? Why, hello there. I thought you were going to the zoo. Understand? Where's George? I told him to get on the next train. If George didn't get on the uptown train, then maybe could he have gotten on the downtown train by mistake? Because I never explained that there were two trains. That must be it. Oh, hang tight, George. I'm coming. <laughs> what? George, hold on. Stay on the train and go to the zoo! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Due to mechanical difficulties, there will be a one hour delay on the uptown line. One hour? That's it, subway's out, running's in. See you, Reginald. Cheerio! George loved riding on the subway, but he also couldn't wait to see a dragon? Not only did George see a dragon on his way to the zoo, he also saw an Italian opera singer, 
some Russian dancers. And a Swiss yodel. George had arrived at the zoo. Oh, no. <gasps> George! <gasps> you made it, George, all by yourself. And faster than I did. Now, let's hurry and get over to the zoo, because I think they... Close at 4 p.m. Sorry. Oh, but it took us all day to get here, and, and we really wanted to see the Komodo dragon. Isn't there anything you can do? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with a monkey in a zoo, I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> so why did it take you all day to get here? It's a long story. Ah, well, little advice. Next time, take the subway. It's faster. <laughs> hey, George. George! <laughs> How about taking a bath to wash all that mud off? George was puzzled. Did the bathtub run out of water? Hey, George, I'm not getting any water downstairs. How about you? I'd better call Mr. Quint. So, how's it look, Mr. Quint? Did our well run dry? Oh, no, no, no. Just a broken pump. You got plenty of water down there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, this here is your house. That's the water. Huh. And to get to it, all you have to do is dig a well. Yep, a well. See, a well is just a hole in the ground that's deep enough to reach water. And a pump, like that one there, suctions the water up and out. Uh, sort of like the way you're using that straw. Every time you suck on it, you're pulling the orange juice up out of your glass. Well, your house won't be seeing water for a few more days, I'm afraid. I have to order you a new pump. A few days? Well, I guess that means we're going back to the city, George. Some of us still need a bath. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go straight in and run a bath, George. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, George? Uh -huh. I have to go help Professor Wiseman. Don't forget about that bath. George decided that the best thing to do was to put all his toys in the tub. <laughs> Hello? Is anyone there? I just wanted to make sure you saw that orange fly eye slipped under your door. We have to shut off all the water at 4 o'clock, which is... now! I'm going in! <laughs> yep, to get to water, all you have to do is dig a well. <laughs> but Hundley had finally cleaned up George's mess. George remembered that a well didn't need to be wide, it just needed to be deep. George had water. What he didn't have was a way to get it out of the ground. George remembered that people used pipes to carry water from their wells. So that's what George needed, a very long pipe. Hmm. 
Maybe this would work. With duct tape, anything was possible. Water was going up the straw. At this rate, George would have his bathtub filled in no time. Except the well was out of water. George had to dig a deeper hole. George had struck the mother load of water. Water spurting up 20 feet in the middle of the city? Not a good sign. See, the whole reason we turned the water off was to figure out why we were losing pressure. <sighs> Turns out the water main leading to the building had a crack in it. I still don't know how George discovered the water main or the crack, but it's a good thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, George, you haven't looked this clean in days. <laughs> when you take a bath, you really take a bath. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Thanks for letting Hunley spend the night while I'm gone. <laughs> and this is a list of everything Hunley needs and when he needs it. <laughs> oh, that's quite a list. Bye-bye. Bye. We'll make sure he has a good time. <laughs> Hunley was used to keeping everything in its proper place. <laughs> To make him feel welcome, George decided they should play with Hundley's toys. So, while I do laundry, would you like to feed Hundley, George? According to the list, it's time. The cup had to be filled to the top line with dry food. <laughs> Hundley didn't want it above or below the line, but exactly right. <laughs> Next, add one half cup of water. his food thoroughly. Waiting for Hundley to chew wasn't George's idea of fun. George couldn't wait to find out what was next on the list. didn't seem to like the monster show. Maybe that number was his favorite channel. Uh, uh. 
George was sure Hundley would enjoy the monster show more than poodle groomers. It's bedtime for monkeys. Oh, dachshunds too. Just to make sure Hundley wasn't trying to tell him something important, George checked the list. Hundley didn't want to play. He always slept with Squeaky Mouse. Squeaky Mouse helped Hundley sleep and kept nightmares away. Hundley was very happy to have a friend like George who would get out of bed to kick Squeaky Mouse off the balcony? George was having a bad dream, and he didn't have his own squeaky mouse. Whoa. Hello, Hunley. How you doing, boy? Was he any trouble? Not at all, right, George? <laughs> Hunley says thank you. Dogs and monkeys don't always understand each other. But sometimes a squeaky mouse can tell you who your real friends are.